Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so this is now your, your second time with the camp and with the U.S. squad, right? Do you feel like one of the boys already? I would say, yeah. I mean, of course, uh, joining them the first time was, uh, you know, as, as it is, you need to get a part of the group and, and learn everybody to, to know. But uh, here, coming here the second time, I, will, I already feel uh, like a big part of the team. Was there any initiation? Is there an initiation when you join a national team like that? A song you have to sing? Did they make you do something to be part of the squad? Yeah, I mean, one of the first days uh, at dinner, we all of a sudden, the new guys had to go up and sing. And it kind of came out of the blues. So I wasn't uh, that You weren't prepared. ready? <laughs> <laughs> what did you have to sing? Um, I mean, I actually stressed a bit because I wasn't <laughs> prepared. So I stood up there for, for some time looking for a song. And then the guys uh, said that I could uh, just choose whatever song. And then I chose actually a Danish song um, to kind of see how they would react and they actually reacted pretty positively uh, even though they didn't know what I was singing. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good squad. Yeah. Uh, Chris, we're all Svenskin brothers, you know, at my time in uh, Sweden with, with Hammerby, but can you talk about your rise from, from Denmark to Sweden and now in, in Italy, how that's been for you? Where, where have you grown the most? Um, yeah, I mean, it, I would say that I've, I've always been a guy that came from the back. I haven't always been uh, the guy that was in the spotlight always. Um, but yeah, going to Sweden for me was a big breakthrough. Um, I grew up uh, in Midtjylland in Denmark, which has a great academy. But going to Sweden and, and playing a lot of, of minutes there into senior football, of course, um, helped me a lot. And then of course, being a part of a, a historic team in Sweden, winning the title and, and the cup also um, means a lot. And of course, then then you experience a lot of things in an early age that others don't. Like when, when we won the league, a lot of people came over and told me that I need to enjoy because not a, not a lot of people actually win stuff in their career, uh, which was kind of weird for me to think about compared that <laughs> we were winning a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's been some quick years, but I've enjoyed everything of it. And I think for me, taking it slowly and living in the moment has, has helped a lot. Yeah, it's good because I didn't win any trophies. So yeah. uh, hey, this guy's <laughs> not <laughs> Something on basketball, brother, bro. This guy's winning left and right. Uh, Chris, I want to ask you. In fact, you said that you need to enjoy, and we're watching you now. You big smile. I remember you coming in. I believe it was the Uzbekistan match, the uh, Pepe goal and the Christian Pulisic uh, penalty. The first image I have is of you immediately running to the goal scorer, patting them on the back. Big smile. A while ago, you were asked to give three words as to what type of player you were, and I want to quote you because you said you were happy, a fighter, and fast. Happy and fighter typically not <laughs> associated with each other. Give give the American audience a better understanding of who you are. How why are you happy and a fighter? How do those two coexist? Coexist. Um, I mean, for me, it's about enjoying, you know, and especially when I got the opportunity to get my debut against Uzbekistan, I just went in to enjoy and get everything from the moment, you know, um, getting the debut for. This incredible team is is a milestone, but also something to be very proud of. Um, so yeah, I kind of think that being happy and enjoying stuff makes, for me at least, um, the journey a lot more fun. And you are Scandinavian, time. of course. Yeah. You gotta you gotta yeah. be happy about yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, and at the same time, with the fighter element, um, I would say it's a lot about fighting the negative like periods that sometimes are there um, because if you don't have the fighter in you it can be very tough and um, so yeah as you say it's it's maybe some opposites in some way but for me they coexist together very well very nice christopher in denmark you also go by chris or what's like the short nickname for christopher 
Yeah, Chris. It, it is Chris. Um, it 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 differs a bit between Chris or Lund. It kind of depends ah. on who I'm talking to, but it it's not really the big you know factor in anything. Nice. Okay, so I just want to know if we can refer to you as Chris. So Chris, question for you. I, I know we we read your bio, and we see that your father's Danish, your your mother's American, if if I'm not mistaken. And I think we take a little bit for granted that we're having an interview with you. You're perfectly bilingual. You play for the U.S. men's national team, but you grew up in Denmark. What was your relationship like with the United States as a country, as a culture, uh, growing up? Um, it was actually very good. Um, of course, when I began to play more professionally football, it was more difficult to come to the States because of time and training and camps and games and stuff. But before I chose the path to go the the football way, I was, I would say, in, in America once a year uh, to visit my family and traveling with my parents and my siblings. Um, and if we didn't have the opportunity for some reason to come to the States, uh, my grandparents or my mom's siblings would come come to us in Denmark. Um, so yeah, when I was young, what, what, I, what part of the states that you'd come come to? Um, we would come to, I think, Seattle the most. Okay. Um, but my mom is from Colorado, so we had also been there a couple of times. Um, I think my sister and mom also went to uh, D.C. once because my mom's uh, sister lived there. So. Yeah, we, we traveled a lot when I was younger, um, so the long travel to the States was, wasn't was really um, a thing that I wasn't used to, so the culture and stuff um, has been a part of um, my life from the beginning. How did your mom end up in Denmark? Um, she actually got a, a job uh, opportunity, so she went to Denmark and then Luckily, found my dad and stayed in Denmark. <laughs> and, we got, and, and we got a left Lund. back. And we got a left back because of it. So thank you. I actually want to know. Uh, you grew up in Denmark, but you were at least Burhalter when he was asked said that he sort of the last two years he's kept an eye on you, which is means he he saw you playing in Sweden. You go from Hacken, you get the move to Palermo. How different has that been? How's it been like playing in Italy? And how different are the two leagues? I mean, of of course, it's it's a big difference. Um, I would say for me, it's it was lovely to be in Sweden, and I enjoy being in Italy a lot as well. The the details they go into stuff there is perfect for me and um, for the improvement. And of course, uh, there's a difference in culture from the Scandinavian culture to the it Italian culture. But I love being there, and and level-wise, I can see myself improve uh, a lot uh, with the move. How's that, how's that Italian coming along? Because Danish, I tried to I tried a little bit to learn. It's impossible. <laughs> I, I, I I couldn't do it. Swedish I was all right, but Danish, ooh, that that yeah, late, that I, accent, it's tough. The Danish uh, people aren't that uh, happy for the language, but the Italian is is coming on well. Um, I'm studying a lot and also bought the uh, Super Duolingo so I can uh, <laughs> practice here. Um, but yeah, of course, it's it's also a bit different for me to learn a language completely. I felt the language barrier a little bit in, in Sweden, but the Danish and the Swedish language is very similar. So, yeah, but um, the Italian language is uh, coming on okay. So uh, you're you're new to this U.S. men's national team setup. Last camp, you come in. Who's who impressed you that you maybe hadn't hadn't thought of or or seen in person? You're like, whoa. These guys can play. I mean, a, a lot of them actually. I mean, I knew all these guys were were super good and maybe a level or two above what I'm used to. Um, but I remember a training. I didn't train, but I saw some clips afterwards of the guys uh, doing some skills. I saw Pulisic taking it behind the leg. I saw Timmy Weyer doing some fancy footwork. Um, I saw Dest, um, Serginho making a nutmeg. Uh, <laughs> so, 
there are a lot of a lot of good guys um but i would say maybe maybe those three um did some stuff in that training where i thought okay i'm 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 where i want to be you know before we let chris go hold up chuck i, I need to i want to back and forth in swedish with chris between you and okay. chris come on uh homer do chris yeah my bra who my do uh yeah my bra brick the bra uh hallet uh ingeting grushan wow ingeting ingeting grushan Ah, all svenska uh, säger det riktigt bra. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> is he saying No, Shana Brushan. Ah, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I know. On a scale of one to ten, Chris, how are we looking? Yeah, great him. How's his uh, all svenska? Um, I would say a solid seven. Ooh. Wow. You can tell he's a nice guy. <laughs> we appreciate you. So good to see you. Thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you. I appreciate it for the opportunity.